I'm Erin Harrison coming to you from the Los Angeles Convention Center at IT Expo West 2010. And I'm joined today by David Hagen, President and CEO of Boingo Wireless. Hi, Welcome. Aaron. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Um, so Wi-Fi enabled devices are obviously flooding the market. Um, so what does that mean for Boingo and what you guys are doing? Yeah, so it's an exciting time in Wi-Fi. Um, up to this point, mostly our business was mostly driven by laptops in laptops in places where people need to use laptops. So think about that as like the travel ribbon, airports, hotels, convention centers. But with Wi-Fi enabled devices like smartphones coming to the market, more and more places make sense to have, to have Wi-Fi networks. A a as an example, um, everybody knows about the iPhone. Um, to compare that to where the market used to be, a heavy data consumption on a, on a smartphone used to be the BlackBerry. That was the heaviest data-centric device, mostly email, of course. Sure. At about 30 megabytes of usage a month. Um, iPhone users, on average, are using a gigabyte a month, which is about a 30 um, times or 30x increase in data. And more and more devices are going to be coming to market that have Wi-Fi chips. So everybody knows now about the iPad. That's going to lead a tablet revolution. Um, all sorts of e-readers have Wi-Fi chips. So the number of devices in market that will be Wi-Fi enabled and thus having people looking to get um, connected to Wi-Fi networks is growing exponentially. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly, it's driving a, a massive data consumption. So where do you see that going next? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's cool because people get these devices and realize that they can use them in ways that they've never used a phone or a PC or a tablet or an e-reader, uh, i.e. a book, right. uh, in the past. And so what that means is that, that they're finding new ways to use those devices. And that has created this opportunity for developers to create all sorts of cool apps. And so you know, the word app really didn't have a meaning until about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And now it's all everybody talks about. Oh, have you tried this app and that app? Right. And so people, consumers are trying these new apps and finding just all sorts of new ways that they can use their device, whatever that device may be, to do more and more things with it. It's not just about voice calling um, or even just um, using the web anymore. It's about doing all sorts of heavier content types of things. Okay, and how is this impacting network congestion on cel cellular networks? Right, it's creating, it's creating a huge problem. So again, um, what used to be heavy data consumption was 30 megabytes a month is now a gig. And frankly, that's gonna grow five, seven, depending on whose forecast you believe. Mm -hmm. but huge data consumption um, in, in the next three to five years. And so that puts an incredible strain on a cellular network. Cellular networks were uh, not really designed for this kind of data consumption. They were de designed for a lot of voice and a little bit of data. And now they're being flooded with all of this, this data usage. And what that means is that the performance declines. Mm -hmm. So whether you're making a phone call and you get a drop call, or you're trying to do surf the web or download an app or watch a video, the performance has really um, uh, gotten much worse than what, than what maybe you used to experience. So network congestion is creating um, an opportunity for both consumers and carriers to look for ways to offload that traffic onto other types of networks, like Wi-Fi networks. Where okay. You have a network in a, in a facility like this with a lot of bandwidth, with quite a few people here, better economics and better performance than what a cellular network has, and so it, it makes it easier for someone to get connected to a Wi-Fi network and do all the heavy content things that they would like to do. Okay. Um, I mean, it seems like consumers everywhere want to connect to Wi-Fi, and I know I personally always go for that option first. Um, so what would you say is driving that growth? Yeah, it's really just what we talked about. So you have this cool new device, has cool new apps on it. Um, you love those apps and you want great performance when you run those apps. And if you're trying to do that over the cellular network, in many cases, you're not going to get the performance that you expect to see. With, if you know that there's a Wi-Fi network available, in fact, you can use Boingo to find out if there's a Wi-Fi network available and connect to it. Um, oh, you can. You okay. Can get, you can get connected to Wi-Fi, and then it gives you a much better user experience. In fact, many apps don't even allow you to use them on cellular networks. FaceTime on the iPhone, as an example, which takes good old, which takes good old voice traffic, and turns it into a very heavy app called mobile video, mm -hmm. that's not even allowed on the cellular network. Oh, okay. So for a company like Boingo, we sit in the middle of all that. So devices, networks, and we've developed a software platform that helps customers what, on whatever device they may have 
to find and connect simply and easily to Wi-Fi networks so they get a better user experience. Okay, great. Um, and carriers definitely want to offload the traffic. So what does that mean for them? They do. So because they're suffering from network congestion, they're looking for ways to offload traffic. In some cases, that may mean that they're building Wi-Fi networks themselves. Mm -hmm. AT&T would be an example of that. Um, other carriers um, partner with companies like Boingo mm -hmm. um, to, to do that offloading for them. So we've got partnerships with companies like Verizon and Skype who use our solution, private label it, and then offer it out to their customer bases. Okay, great. Um, and also the pro proliferation of Wi-Fi is driving the growth for other venues to, to build this out in addition to um, you know, hotels and convention centers and all the places that we're used to seeing Wi-Fi. Um, so where do you see that going? No, it's a great question. So in the past, in a laptop-driven Wi-Fi world, it was, it was those places where people are carrying laptops. But with smartphones and other types of devices, all sorts of different venues make sense. So you just think about any time you have a, a relatively large number of people congregating in a place. It could be a stadium, an arena, it could be a railroad station, it could be a shopping mall. Sure. And they're trying to get connected, taking photos, uploading photos. Think about it like at a sporting event. So anytime you have that kind of a situation, the cellular network's really going to struggle to keep up with the demand. So those types of venues now make sense for Wi-Fi. And so we'll be growing from a few hundred thousand commercial locations uh, in the U.S., for example, to millions of locations, ultimately, that will have Wi-Fi networks. Okay, very interesting. Thanks, David. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, Aaron. I've been speaking with David Hagen, President and CEO of Boingo Wireless. This is Aaron Harrison coming to you from IT Expo West 2010 in Los Angeles.